I'm a big fan of tools written in Go that make writing code easier, cleaner, but more importantly, more fun. And today I'm going to talk to you guys about a package that makes writing your own custom CLI in Go that much better. Whether you're a beginner or someone more advanced, you know that Go is great for creating your own custom CLI application or program that you can use for your internal projects or make it available to the entire Go ecosystem all over the internet. But I'm gonna show you a tool that allows you to create a powerful modern CLI and it takes care of a bunch of boilerplate for you. All right, so the package I'm talking about is Cobra by SPF 13. It is one of the more popular packages in the Go ecosystem. If you've ever written a CLI, I'm sure that you've come across this. It has 33.7 thousand stars. Go make sure you start that link in the description below. And like it says, Cobra is used in many Go projects as Kubernetes, Hugo, and GitHub CLI to name a few. This list contains a more extensive list of projects using Cobra. Cobra is allowed providing a simple interface to create powerful modern CLI interface similar to Git and Go tools. Now, one of the main reasons why I really like Cobra is because it follows the very, very good principle of Go, which is just keep it simple and focus on one thing at a time. And Cobra just focuses on how to make your CLI applications that much better. Cobra is built on a structure of modern commands, arguments, and flags. Commands represent actions. Args are things and flags are modifiers for those actions. Users intuitively know how to interact with them. But let's go through an example to showcase how powerful is Cobra. But before we do, there is something else that Cobra has that not a lot of people know about, which is the Cobra CLI repository. It only has 454 stars and it really makes writing Cobra applications that much easier. Okay, so you can see here, I have an open directory and by open, I mean empty. I don't know why I said open, but it's empty. There's nothing here. So first of all, let's go do go mod init password gen. And now if you flip back over to the Cobra CLI repository, just for a second, it says, once you've created the application you go into, you can do Cobra CLI in it. So let's go back. Boom. Your Cobra application is ready at this location. Let's go ahead and open VS code. All right. So you can see here that the Cobra CLI generated a few things. First, it has a main.go file, go sum, a license and a command folder with a root.go file with a bunch of stuff here. Now, I'm not going to go into detail of exactly what's going on here, but you can see here that the main.go just executes this function and this execute functions runs the root command execute method. As it says, root command represents the base command when called without any sub commands. And you can see here that it has the Cobra struct with a use short and long form description. And then here, one thing is commented out that says uncomment the following line if your bare application has an action associated with it. But just to show you how this works, you can go back into your terminal, you can run go build, you can do a go install and you can do password gen bang a longer description that spans multiple lines and quickly contains examples used of your application, for example, which is taken right here. So in the following, I'm going to create a simple password generator that's going to ask the use for three flags, the length of the password, if you want to include numerical values or is digits and is special characters. So should we include special characters in the password that we generate for you? All right. So I have a new file here called password.go. It's going to exist in the existing command package. But the first thing I'm going to do is create a new command. So the name of the command is just going to be generate. Now, one thing we're going to do differently is we're going to actually add a run parameter to our struct. So it's going to call generate password. This doesn't exist. So let's define it. This function is going to parse three flags for us. The length, does our user want a digit in their password? And does the user want special characters in their password. Okay, so first we're gonna do length cmd dot flags. We're gonna do get int and then the name is gonna be just length. And we're gonna do that for is digits. So is digits and then we're gonna ignore the error cmd flags and this is gonna be a bool to so get bool. And last but not least we're gonna do is special characters. So next, the whole logic of this is going to be created from something called a character set, which right now is going to be just a list of all the letters in the English alphabet. We're going to expand the character set. So if is digits, our character set is going to be expanding. Nothing too crazy. We're going to do the same thing for special characters. Then our character set is going to include all of these special characters. So now let's actually generate our password here. So we're going to use the make function. And next, we're going to populate the password. 
All right, perfect. So again, the logic here isn't too complicated. So there's one thing left for us to do, and that is to actually hook all of this up. Any command that we do, we have to attach it to the root command with this boilerplate structure. So we're gonna do a func in it, and this is gonna do something very simple. We're gonna do root command, add command, and the name of the command, which is just generate CMD. So it is the Cobra command struct. But there's actually something else that we need to discuss. These three lines, we are parsing the flag. But if we try to use our password gen generate command and pass it in the flags up here, well, it's not going to work. Let's go ahead and add that. So we're gonna do generate command, and then the type that this flag is going to be, so int p, the name of it, a shorthand form, so dash l, a default value, not a minimum value, and then a small description. The same thing, but two more times that flags, false by default, and include digits in the generated password. And then one more time, just to really sing it home, and there's gonna be special characters. One eternity later. All right, so let's go ahead and test out our application finally. So we're gonna do go build, go install, password gen. Again, this is the name of the package that I created in the go mod in at the beginning of the video. And let's see what happens if I just run it like so. And you can see here our password generates a mix of lowercase and bigger case. So you can see that it works just fine. However, what if we do the dash H flag? Generate random passwords with customizable options and we did not have to define this. We just have to really put it into Cobra and Cobra takes care of the rest for us. Okay, but now let's generate our password for real. So let's do 12 characters, we want digits, and we want special characters, bang. Okay, well, what if we don't want special characters, we just want digits? Perfect. And what about if we don't want digits, but we just want special characters and something from the alphabet? So you can see here that our CLI is super responsive, bang, we get our passwords generated super easily, and it's something that makes writing CLIs extremely valuable using the Cobra package. All right, so I hope you all enjoyed this video. This is going down into one of those series where I explain different Go packages that you may or may not have heard of. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Have you used Cobra before? If so, what's something really great about it that you enjoy? If not, what's something that you learned about today? The code for this will be available on my GitHub. I'm typically not a big fan of posting code from these tutorials, but a lot of people want to see it, so I will do it for you guys. But as always, make sure to comment, click like, and subscribe if you haven't. We crossed a 10K, but we're aiming for higher, higher goals. And I got to leave you guys off with two things. What Go package should I cover next? Do you have any ideas, any suggestions? Let me know. And two, you got a palette.